I would like to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Richard Arnold. He is the director of the Naval Medical Research Unit at Dayton, in Dayton uh, and focuses in human performance. And I will caveat um, that for many of these introductions, I'm going to use acronyms because that's what most of us are very familiar with. So the Naval Medical Research Unit Dayton is NAMRU D. So Dr. Arnold leads a team of 75 scientists and technical staff in conducting research and development to address the challenges in the aerospace environment presents to human health, safety, readiness, and performance. Before arriving at NAMRU D as a staff scientist, Dr. Arnold served on active duty as a US Naval Aerospace Experimental Psychologist and subsequently owned and operated a small human performance consulting firm. He received his doctorate from the University of Texas, specializing in psychometrics and behavioral genetics. His research has focused principally on individual differences in personal selection. So Dr. Arnold, thank you for joining us today and I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much, General Bartman. And uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, very happy to be with you today. Uh, I want to take the opportunity uh, first to tell you about uh, NAMRU Dayton and what we do and how we can work together. And I would imagine not many among you uh, know us or have possibly even heard of us. Um, the federal labs that participate in the OFRN, uh, some are on a, uh, you know, a large scale. They have green signs on the interstate uh, guiding you to them. Uh, NASA Glenn, obviously, and uh, NASA Center, um, AFRL, you know, measured in the thousands. Uh, NAMRU Dayton is quite small by comparison, and so we feel very uh, privileged to be part of OFRN as one of the federal labs. As General Bartman mentioned, I, I lead a team of about 75 uh, scientists and engineers here as one of the two component labs to NAMRU Dayton. Uh, NAMRU Dayton itself, though, is only about 150 people overall, so quite small. Uh, we have a very, a very narrow range in terms of our mission space, uh, but we have participated and partnered in OFRN uh, previous rounds uh, to great effect, I think. So uh, with that, if, uh, if you'll move to the next slide, please, or uh, two slides, this is my required uh, legal uh, disclaimers. Uh, so where does NAMRU D sit in the grand scheme of things for the Navy? Uh, so you can see we're, we're um, at the bottom there, you can see us on the far left. We're one of seven uh, subordinate labs to the Naval Medical Research Center. So Naval Medical Research Center uh, is uh, responsible for all Navy medical research and development. And uh, we have other labs here. So for example, uh, NAMRU San Antonio over next from the last on the right, uh, they do uh, combat casualty care, trauma research, uh, submarine medical research lab on the far right, uh, they do undersea medicine. Uh, and then here we are on the far left and uh, next slide please, I think that gives our uh, a structure there. Uh, we do research in aerospace medicine and environmental health effects. Uh, and you can see by our organizational structure, um, the two colored sections on the left um, are the Environmental Health Effects Laboratory, and I'll talk a, a bit about that towards the end of my presentation. And then NAMREL, so NAM, that's our other acronym. NAMREL and EHEL are the two component labs of, of NAMRU D, and I'm the director of uh, NAMREL, so I'll talk a bit more in detail about um, that lab, but I'll tell you about the rest of the command as well since, since the entire command does participate in uh, OFRN and are very keen uh, to find good uh, research collaborations. Next slide, please. Um, and so as far as collaborations go, I, I wanna uh, spend a little time on this slide uh, talking about our federal sponsors. And I did wanna, I wanted to mention our federal sponsors because unlike uh, many of well, most of the other research labs within the Department of Defense, uh, we do not have a core research budget. We operate on a, a competitive reimbursable uh, research model. Uh, our research sponsors tend to be predominantly uh, Department of Defense and federal government sponsors, but it is, uh, it is a competitive environment. What that means for partnering is that we don't have discretionary money 
to release broad agency announcements and solicitations. Rather, we rely on partnering uh, with uh, both governmental and non-governmental uh, research collaborators in order to um, uh, facilitate in, uh, our research mission. Um, you can see at the top there, this is not an exhaustive list, but some of our external uh, research collaborators. I'll mention we have, I think it mentions at the bottom of the slide, three educational partnership agreements. Uh, we have agreements with Ohio State, uh, Case Western Reserve, and uh, Wright State University. Uh, these are uh, based on the relatively extensive research we do with them, our multiple partnerships. Uh, and so we've established educational partnership agreements, which just facilitate those exchanges of personnel and uh, and even students who can uh, uh, do research at our lab and, and so forth. And then various other uh, community relations. We've got, uh, you can see our number of support agreements. Uh, these are any research we do is going to require some sort of mechanism, whether it's a support agreement, a contract, cooperative research and development agreement, uh, and so on. And I'll talk a little bit about that at, towards the end of the presentation too, and happy to answer questions during the Q&A for those not familiar with those mechanisms. Next slide, please. Um, mission overview. Uh, so I've already really alluded to the mission. We are in the game of uh, readiness, performance, and survivability of uh, war fighters, of service members uh, in the aerospace environment uh, for my lab, and then in the uh, environmental health effects more broadly, environmental exposures and effects on health and performance there for uh, the eHEL lab. Next slide, please. So uh, a bit uh, more detail about what uh, NAMREL does. So we do research in uh, several broad areas, acceleration and sensory sciences. And I'd just like to, to note that as far as human acceleration research, uh, not just NAMRU-D, but Wright-Patterson Air Force Base between our lab and AFRL has, I would say, arguably the world's a uh, single top research site for doing human acceleration research. Uh, so I'll talk a, a bit about our disorientation research device. Uh, we have a number of other acceleration devices. The AFRL, which is actually in the building connected to us, and uh, we have collaboration with them as well, now has the DOD's only uh, remaining human centrifuge. Um, so we do work in acceleration. Obviously, this, is, this may be a good opportunity long-term uh, for the state uh, partnering with this very unique and capable site here on base. Uh, sensory sciences is a, a vestibular and visual research. Uh, biomedical science is a, is a real potpourri, but we do work on uh, fatigue countermeasures. We do work on uh, aeromedical standards. Uh, environmental physiology is really our altitude effects program uh, within the uh, aeromedical branch. And then we have a very capable engineering and technical support services to build uh, many of the unique devices we use for our research. Next slide, please. Um, some of the core research programs, I'll, I'll, I'll try to touch on ones I didn't mention already in the previous. Um, we do work on aircrew neck and back pain. And I should note that this is in large measure a result of our OFRN uh, participation. So in round two, we had a collaboration with Ohio State University and, and three partners of theirs, but they were lead. Uh, we partnered on an OFRN. Now, we were, aren't eligible for that funding, uh, but we did uh, execute a cooperative research and development agreement that allowed the research team, the OFRN research team, to do their research in our laboratory, uh, which was then a springboard for us to develop uh, a program of our own in biomechanics to address issues with air crew neck and back pain, which is a big concern in the DOD. Um, altitude effects research I alluded to. Uh, I think the others, vision is a big one, personnel selection, and then en route care in the more clinical aeromedical domain. Next slide, please. Um, some of our research facilities. So we have, as I mentioned earlier, we have a, a number of motion and acceleration uh, research platforms for human use research uh, within NAMRD. And then on top of that, quite a lot at AFRL, uh, who we're co-located with. Uh, spatial disorientation is a big focus area for us, as it is the uh, number one leading cause, a single cause of uh, flight mishaps 
not just in Navy, DOD, but in aviation generally. And then quite a, a number of facilities for altitude effects research. Next slide, please. Um, more of our uh, more of our research facilities, uh, the OB lab, as it's known, this is our uh, uh, neck and back pain um, lab that I mentioned previously that was uh, in large part an outgrowth of uh, our OFRN collaboration. Uh, it's got a motion capture system, high precision motion capture um, for for uh, ergonomics and uh, biomechanics. Uh, we have a sleep lab so we could do on site uh, sleep deprivation research in order to evaluate effectiveness of countermeasures, um, so forth and so on. I, I'm, I'm watching the clock here, so uh, let's go on to the next slide to make sure I get through them all at least. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't have a slide on just one of our devices. The disorientation research device, otherwise known as the Kraken, is uh, I would say the signature device of NAMRO and NAMRU D, uh, it's kind of our calling card as it were. So this is a unique uh, capability within the Department of Defense, actually within the country uh, for that matter. Uh, you can see in the photo there, that capsule uh, rotates 360 degrees in three axes, yaw, pitch and roll, uh, six feet uh, vertically, uh, 32 feet approximately uh, horizontally. And then the entire device rotates uh, in the planetary axis about the device hull. Uh, the capsule can be configured as different vehicles or aircraft cockpits. It can be controlled from inside the capsule or by the experimenters if, uh, for specific profiles. And this is, uh, in fact, our most recent, we're in discussion with NASA about possibly using this as a simulator for a lunar lander uh, for the, for the uh, Artemis program. So, um, Fingers crossed that, that that will bear fruit, but we're doing uh, most of our research currently related to uh, either vestibular physiology or spatial disorientation in uh, aviation contexts. Next slide, please. Um, I mentioned the other lab, the Environmental Health Effects Lab, uh, is effect, their, they, their mission is broader in terms of the uh, uh, military mission. So as NAMREL is focused on aerospace, EHEL is, uh, is focused on all military environments in which there may be an exposure, whether that's uh, chemical stressors, uh, physical stressors, or combinations of, of stressors. So for example, uh, noise and um, uh, uh, jet fuel fumes as might exp be experienced on the deck of an aircraft carrier. Next slide, please. Uh, you can see the... Um, the core capabilities of the uh, Environmental Health Effects Laboratory, uh, just as NAMREL uh, is focused on um, aerospace medicine, uh, EHEL is focused on these environmental exposures. And uh, upon exposure, you can see the uh, wide range of uh, endpoints that they can test to determine health effects or effects on performance with some of the cognitive and behavioral testing resulting from exposures and then ultimately generating risk assessments uh, to provide guidance to the operational forces on uh, the various exposures that um, service members experience. Next slide, please. Um, and this is the last, and I wanted to, I wish I'd left myself more than a minute, uh, but I did want to talk about how, how do you work with us? Because I, I mentioned earlier, we do not have uh, discretionary core funding for awards. So our focus is really on partnering uh, and going in with uh, uh, a DOD or a non-DOD partner and going after funding opportunities, DOD and non-DOD funding opportunities. And as you saw, saw from an earlier slide, we have been successful in doing so. It requires a bit more patience uh, than maybe some of our partners are used to working with other agencies where they do have uh, opportunities uh, for uh, that are solicited for uh, research awards. So uh, we do we have OFRN alignment to our mission priorities. You saw some from the last round earlier. Uh, we will have uh, more embedded in the next round solicitation uh, that will be that will relate to the the mission that I just described. Um, I mentioned uh, DoD and non-DoD intramural and uh, extramural solicitations. General Bartman talked about the STTR program. Uh, in his overview, we we do participate in that, and in fact. SBIR does not, but STTR does actually allow 
for government labs to be active participants in the projects themselves. And we have done that before uh, with uh, several STTR awards. I mentioned CRADAs. This is one mechanism by which we can work together, contracting. And then I talked about the educational partnership agreements earlier. Uh, and it looks like I just have hit my mark uh, on time. I think the last slide is just uh, contact information. And I'll be around for the uh, Q&A uh, discussion sessions. If you have any follow-on questions for me about the presentation or anything else we do here, uh, I'll just note at the bottom, if you if you want to copy some emails, contacts, you see mine in the bottom right. And then just to the left of me is uh, Dr. Karen Mumi. She's the director of the uh, eHEL lab. Uh, and so if you have interest in either of our labs, there's our information. And with that, I'll leave it. Thank you.